Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, you be lifted higher. 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 He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw. Yes, he did say. All men. scared men. Yeah. He said all men. Yeah. <laughs> we serve a mighty God. Yeah. We serve an awesome God. Yes, we, do. we serve a God that sometimes we need to get to a place where we lose our natural mind yeah. and praise yeah. him. Yeah. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continually upon my lips. He say, my soul <laughs> makes her boast in the Lord. And then he talked to his neighbor and he said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Yes, sir. And really what David was saying, let's tag team praise him. Yes. Even before, before Paul and Silas got in prison, David was saying, let's tag team praise him. Because you know he's been good to you and I know he's been good to me. Yes, we might as well tag team praise him. Yes. And when David got to that place of tag team praising and the king say, I, I need to get this crazy man up out of here. Because he's supposed to be scared and he's giving his God a praise. And you need to think about your situation right now and it it should cause something in the inside of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To start praising him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You ought to be praising him right now in the middle of what you're going through. Yeah, yeah. Praise will get you all the way through. Mm -hmm. Praise will get you up out of it. But you just got to learn to praise him. Yes. And see, our problem, especially in 2016, we want to get to the place, uh, I praise him after. No, no. Yeah. If you believe that he's awesome and mighty, you ought to praise him right now. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You ought to praise him right now. Don't wait on your neighbor. Praise him right now. If you got faith in him, you ought to praise him right now, not later on, right now yeah yeah now faith Roy it's not later on faith but now faith will praise him right now now faith will worship him right now yeah yeah now faith now faith yeah yeah praise him right now praise him right now praise him right now yeah 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 your praise yeah yeah ought to be on your lips yeah yeah praise him right now praise him praise him Praise him, yeah. Praise him, yeah. Praise him. Praise him, praise him, yeah. Yeah, if you look at him and you begin to praise him, you won't be looking at your situation because praise is an arrow in your enemy's neck. And if you want God to choke off your enemy, to choke off your situation, you ought to create an atmosphere called praise. You ought to create an atmosphere where he'll come in and invade your situation. He say praise, yes, yes. He inhabits the praise of his people, yeah. If you praise him, yeah, I believe he'll come right down and visit you, yes, yes, yes. Praise him right now, yeah, yeah. Praise him with the timbre, yeah. Praise him with song, yeah. Praise him with the shout of victory. Praise him right now, yeah. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Oh, ye people, yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe the King of Glory wants to come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he wants, he wants your praise today. Yeah, he wants your praise today. He wants your praise today. Yeah, 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 you blow him a kiss today. You wrap up in a card your best Valentine gift for him yeah 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 praise him today yeah praise him today yeah praise him today yeah praise him right now yeah yeah praise him 
praise him. Praise him. Praise him, yes. He's worthy, yes, he's worthy. He's worthy, he's worthy, yes he is. Yes he is. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you right now, God. Father, we bless you right now, God. Father, we shift this atmosphere right now, God. Mm, thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. You're worth all of this, God. Father, we just want to say thank you, God. God, we just want to lift up your name, God. God, because you are high and lifted up, God. God, your words say praise is commonly and praise is due, God. God, we got a right to praise you. Yes, God. We got a right to praise you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. I wouldn't hold my praise in today. I wouldn't hold my praise in today. And if you got to block out your neighbor right now, and if you got to close your eyes right now, and if you got to go in your secret place right now, you ought to praise him. You ought to praise him, not because of what he can do, but because of who he is and what he's already done. Yes, he came through 42 generations just for you, and that deserves a praise, yes. He got on a cross for you, yeah. He was beat all night long for you, and he deserves to be praised, yeah. He could have came down, but he stayed there, and he deserves to be praised, yeah. And he didn't stay in the grave, but he got up with all power, yes. He, he got up with all power, yeah. Resurrection power, healing power, delivering power, saving power. And we don't want to praise him. The devil is a liar. I got to praise him, yes, because if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I would have been swallowed up. So I got to praise him, yes. I made up in my mind that I'm going to praise him, yeah. I'm going to be a difference maker by praising him, yeah. I'm going to tell him thank you, yes. He said all things give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It's part of his will. Uh, yeah, for us to tell him thank you. Thank you in what I mean? Yes, God. Thank you in what I came out? Yes, God. I just got to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, we bless you for your living word, God. God, we honor you because you are also ruler. You're a gentle redeemer. And Father, we love calling your name. Yes, God, we love calling your name. For there's a, no other name whereby men can be saved but by the name of Jesus. And God, you say at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Even demons tremble at your name God and we thank you that Jesus is our elder brother we are joint heirs in Christ Jesus Father we thank you right now God for this is your day in your house of hope God Father we thank you for releasing hope right now God Lord have mercy The Lord just said, I'm releasing you hope to walk in hope. Father, we thank you right now. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you right now, God, for you speaking to us, God. Tune our ears into you, God. So that we can hear you right now. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Father, we thank you for destroying every yoke, God. Yes. And for removing every burden this day by your anointing, God. Yes. 
And Father, I thank you that your spirit, God, is upon me to preach, God. Yeah. To set captives free this day in the name of Jesus. God, I decree and declare, God, to yield to you, God. Pour grace upon my lips, God. Help me to be sensitive to your spirit, God. And Father, we thank you that your word will not be hindered or bound, God. But there will be living waters flowing this day, God. In the name of Jesus, God, that your word will come with power. Yes, God, and demonstration of your spirit. Exceed our expectations today, God, with infallible proof of your handiwork. God, do a corporate and a personal moving today, God. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you, God. Yes, God, I thank you right now, God, that you're releasing anointing, God, to cause us to snap out of the trance, God, that we've been in, God. Father, you're releasing an anointing right now, God. Yes, God, that you're snapping us out of some stuff, God. In the name of Jesus, God, you're waking us up, God, so we can walk up out of some stuff, God. And we just want to say thank you, God. Be glorified in this place, God. Father, I thank you for hope. Father, I thank you for each and every person that's in this place. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Have your way. Have me to minister with great grace and with great power. And it's in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen. Give the Lord a hand clap and praise. Amen. Amen. We do thank God for today. We thank God for this hour. Amen. John chapter 8, verse 31 and verse 32 got two passages passages of scripture for you today. Just want to say good morning. Good morning. Amen. Want to say good morning. Amen. John chapter 8 verse 31 and verse 32. We ain't got to do it right now, Sister Lena, but you, did you know Mother Henderson that used to go to Jerusalem? You didn't know her, Grace Henderson. She used to sing this song this morning when I rose, I didn't have no doubt. And then she got to the part, uh, I felt like running. And I think she was like 80 some years old and she used to get out there in that, in that aisle. <laughs> Lord have mercy. She said, I felt like running. I felt like singing. I felt like praying. Yeah. John chapter 8. I guess I just feel like that all by myself. John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32 reads like this. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue, if means uh, supposing that or just in case ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Uh, verse 32, and ye shall know the truth. That means you shall get intimate with the truth. What is truth? Jesus is truth. Uh, and the truth shall make you free. Uh, not going to stay there and bother that too long, but uh, that scripture there uh, sometimes can get us in trouble. Come on. Somebody say amen. amen. Uh, it's, it's not about, uh, and you can go ahead and turn to Luke 13, verse 10. Uh, you're just telling somebody and using this saying, tell the truth, you know the truth, or make you free. Somebody say amen. Amen, because just because you tell the truth 
it doesn't mean you're going to go free. That's right. <laughs> Let me get me a, a, a witness on that. Uh, there's many people, uh, I know some of you all may not know nothing about this, in the court system or in the corrections facility that told the truth. <laughs> and the truth didn't get them free and out. Mm -mm. Amen. It may have got them locked up longer. <laughs> but what he's talking about here is once he reveals truth to you and you begin to walk in that truth, then you can walk in a level of freedom. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just say that I was in poverty, which I'm not. Mm -hmm. Somebody say amen. Amen. And once I know the truth that he wants me to prosper and be in good health and I walk in that truth, then I will begin to experience prosperity. Yes. It's because of the truth that I know. Yes. Mm, yes. Lord have mercy. Uh, yeah, yeah. So he say, and not only uh, if you know it, you got to continue in it. Yes. Uh, because we got this microwave system. Uh, uh, once we learn a scripture and we quote it two times we, ex we think we're going to experience it no, continue means you got to keep on in it yes, yes. yeah, 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 Luke 13 uh, verse 10 through 17 amen the gospel of Luke <laughs> the physician that took his time and wrote this gospel it said in verse 10 and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. Brother Ray, I said this time and I moved this thing way too fast. It's tripping up here. <coughs> Amen. Good Lord. And behold, verse 11, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. 18 years and was bowed about together and could in no wise, that means she couldn't lift herself up. Uh, verse 12, and when Jesus saw her and at that moment, Jesus saw her and he called her. And he didn't just call her, but he called her to him. And said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Yes. And he laid his hands on her. So he called, no, no, no. He saw her, he called her, and he said to her, and then he laid his hands on her. Lord have mercy, she get the package. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight yeah. after 18 years and glorified God. Right. As soon as she was made straight, yeah, she glorified God. Yeah. But verse 14, just to help us understand what happened uh, when miracles come to pass, uh, verse 14 says, and the ruler of the synagogue, we, we're talking about the religious, those that just come to do their ministry, Lord, straight of work. Mm -hmm, to make sure this in place and that's in place, Roy. Uh, and the ruler of the synagogue answered. I didn't see a question, but he spoke up. Come on. Somebody, you know, if you have a different version, I, I open it for you to read it right now. Uh, and if you got something besides, uh, he answered. No question, but he answered. Just spoke up to be speaking up. Ain't nobody asking him no question now. I, I'm just, this, this, the King James now. And so if your Bible said Jesus questioned him and he answered, I need you to read it. But the King James says, and the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. He's mad, y'all. Because, I, I'm going to give you the reason because uh, at least we know what he's mad at because sometimes, uh, Brother Ray, Elder Brother Ray, uh, people get mad for nothing. Y'all ever seen it? People that just get mad for mad sake. But I'm going to compliment this brother here because he got mad for something. 
because that Jesus healed on the Sabbath day. And he, now Jesus is teaching. And, and Roy, what I see here is this religious minded ruler uh, interrupts Jesus' teaching and got to get his point across. I'm, I'm just reading. I'm just, I'm just, I promise you, I'm just reading. And, 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 and said unto the people, there are six days. Now, Jesus is the teacher. Now, all of a sudden, he invites himself, gets another mic from Brother Ray back there. And, and, and now we got, uh, you know, on TV, they have the husband and wife teaching sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Amen. So I guess he must have saw TV way back then and say, I'm going I'm to help him teach this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he gets up and talks to the people. Uh -huh. Yeah, and said unto the people, there are six days yeah. which men ought to work. Mm -hmm. In them, therefore, come and be healed. And not on the Sabbath day. What he's saying is, uh, uh, brought teacher or brought Jesus. Uh, they had six days to come and get healed. Yeah. Yeah. And this ain't now one of them. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm hmm and so Jesus lets him slip his doctrine out there. Amen. Because uh, Brother Gamba has a saying, uh, sometimes we can be letter-minded but not spiritually minded. We know the letter but we don't know the God of the letter. Yeah. And so Jesus lets him use his microphone. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think they call it a lapel mic. They put it right here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in verse 15, uh, after he speaks, then our Savior answers him. Uh -huh. The Lord then answered him and said, thou hypocrite. Yeah. Lord have mercy. Oh, now, now you just imagine this. You don't came up here and got this lapel mic and, and then talked and got up here in front of these people. That's why you got to be careful about getting up in front of God's people. And, and Jesus said, you hypocrite. Can, can you imagine the ruler of the synagogue being called the hypocrite? Yeah. Uh, how is the person that do this at the church and do that at the church and do this at the church and, and Jesus got the audacity, you know how we say it, uh, to call him a hypocrite. He been going to that church for a while. Well, he says, thou hypocrite. Yeah. And, and you know, we don't want nobody to go home not knowing what a hypocrite is, but a hypocrite is a play actor. Somebody impersonating to be something that they're not. Uh huh. Yeah, it's like uh, they, they, they get, you know, um, I know y'all ain't watched it, but just in case you know, some of us got some of that old stuff in us and still want to watch it. They got a movie called Straight Out of Compton now. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And, and, and they went and got some other guys to play those parts. They're not those guys, but they're playing those parts. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And I read yesterday, no, Friday, uh, that this guy by the name of Suge Knight, this ain't in my message, but I'm just giving it to you. Uh, uh, he used to be hooked up with Death Row Records. And, and he didn't like the script. And they didn't, they didn't invite him when they made it. So he shows up on the scene and tells them, uh, I, I, I think y'all doing some things that, that wasn't real. And because he wasn't a part of it, they had him led escorted out of there. And, and now he's filing a lawsuit, locked up, ain't even watched the movie Lord Talk to Us. Going by what somebody else say. They wouldn't even allow him to watch the movie because he's locked up. But he's going by what somebody else say and trying to use it to get some money. Uh, yeah, straight out of Compton. <laughs> got play, got, got actors trying to be dead men. Well, what are you talking about, preacher? Easy E been gone. Yes, sir. But got people playing come on, come on. them parts. Uh -huh. mm. <laughs> so Ice Cube and Dr. Dre uh, files a motion with their attorney. Say, we ain't got nothing to do with Shug. Lord have mercy. 
And, and, and what I'm trying to show you is uh, sometimes you got to go ahead and let God know that I ain't got nothing to do with these hypocrites. Lord have mercy. I ain't going to bother nobody, but Jesus said in verse 15, the Lord then answered him and said, thou hypocrite, doeth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass, A-S-S, -S, yes, donkey, but the Bible says ass. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, he, yeah, yeah, your beast from the stall. And, and you lead him away to get water. Yes. And what he's saying is, if you can lead an ox to freedom, mm -hmm. to get them some water, and you can lead a donkey to freedom, yes. as stubborn as he is, Lord have mercy, yes. to get him some water. He said, ought not, Lord have mercy. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. If, 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 if you can break your own rules, Lord have mercy. Let me, let, me, let me give you a little bit about these uh these man-made laws. Uh, I remember, let me read this. And ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day. And when he had said these things, all his adversaries, I'm talking about adversaries in the synagogue. Now, we, we, we weren't preaching on the, having a tent revival now. Uh -uh. Not on the corner, but this, this in the synagogue. In the church. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the church, in the four walls. Yeah. In the local assemblies. Yeah. yeah. And all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. The people were waiting on a real move of God. Yeah. But the, the, the synagogue leaders were content with people just coming and going. Lord have mercy. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if I can use for a title for Ray, you got to come up here and sneak this timer and don't tell nobody what's on. I need a few more minutes. Amen. Uh, for a title, he called and liberated me. He called and liberated me. Yeah, yeah. He called and liberated me he called the word called me to command or request to come yeah yeah he commanded or requested me to come and I'm not just talking about me but he called you and he has requested you to come uh, uh, liberate means to set free from a situation yeah yeah it, it also means a state of being free. Uh-huh. It also means uh, the positive enjoyments of rights and privileges. Lord have mercy. Uh, it means uh, to set free from oppression or confinement. What is uh, confinement? Uh, confinement is being locked up. Uh-huh. And locked into uh -huh, a situation that's abnormal but now the system that has locked you up wants you to treat it as normal and it's abnormal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it means to, to release from a situation. Uh, as I was studying this thing, this is what the Lord uh, took me to. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, in Rayford, Florida. I know none of y'all don't go on vacation to Rayford. Uh, uh, but I had a, a vacation in Rayford. Lord have mercy. And, and in Rayford, Florida, they got the... Uh, all of it is prison. All of us are behind uh, the razor wire. Yeah, yeah. All of us are locked up in the state's custody. Lord have mercy. And, and in their custody, Roy, uh, sometimes uh, we think just because we're not in confinement that we're not in prison. Lord have mercy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but, Roy, sometimes you have to walk outside and really look at the wire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, I had something called minimum custody. That means every morning they would let me loose, Lord have mercy, temporarily. Lord God, talk to us. But before the day was over, Roy, they relocked me up. Good God, yeah, yeah. And see, some of us have experienced a level of freedom, but temporarily. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Before the day was over, you were locked 
back up again. Lord have mercy. And see, because I had minimum custody, Roy, sometimes something happens in you and your ego begins to swell up. And God has to show you with that little bit of freedom that you still locked up. Lord have mercy. And see, here this woman here, uh, she had been bowed yeah, yeah, together, Lord have mercy. And that means she had been bent over double, Lord God. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and it said that she had been bowed like this for 18 years. That's a long time. And, and said she could not lift herself up. Yeah. And that tells me that she tried, yeah, yeah, to stand all the way up. Lord have mercy. And sometime, Roy, we try to get all the way out, but we just can't get all the way out. Yeah, we experience breakthrough, we experience turnaround, but there's still something hindering us from getting up and all the way out. Yeah, yeah, because there's some things that we can get out of by ourselves, but then there's something that you need the awesome power of God to get you out of. Yeah, yeah. And see, this woman here happened to make it to the synagogue. God, talk to us. Yeah, and, and I need to talk to us about this because we get a headache and can't make it to the synagogue. We get a toe ache and can't make it to the synagogue. But here this woman coming to church all humped over, not worrying about what they gonna say, can't even see the whole church. She got to look sideways, but she still came to church. Lord have mercy. As soon as I sleep over, I can't make it to church. But here this woman for 18 years can't even see the praise and worship team. For 18 years can't see the preacher right, but she still came. Yeah. 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 Katie must get a good view of what's going on. Know everybody in the church watching her bending over. Yeah. But she in the synagogue. Yeah. She can't even see the exercise right. She got to see it with a side view. And see, that's our problem. Yeah. Sometimes we can't see it with a front view. We're seeing things from a side view. What is a side view? Roy got saved a few years before me. And he was telling me about uh, what God done for him. Yeah, yeah. That's a side view. Yeah, yeah. Because him telling me his testimony is not like me having my own front view. Lord have mercy. And see, some of us are walking off of side views. Yeah. We're walking on what we heard the preacher say in 99 and 2001 at Watch Night Stadium. Yeah, at Watch Night Sir. But what has God did for you in 2016? Can you get up and testify that the Lord is good and his mercy does endure forever? Can you get up and tell somebody right in the midst of trouble that trouble don't last always? Lord have mercy. Yeah, I come to tell you that trouble don't last always. Yeah, I was coming here this morning and, and I say, Civil, Lord have mercy. These are some bumpy roads coming to hope, Lord have mercy. And God say, Tell my people that sometime before you get to the place of hope, you got to go through some bumpy places. Yeah. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's good, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Roy, to keep your eyes open when you see bumpy holes in the road. <laughs> yeah, you, that means you got to keep. <laughs> focus Lord have mercy and, and we need to keep focus in 2016 I, I, I'm glad that that lady wasn't driving for us because she couldn't have seen what we saw yeah 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 but Roy I had to keep my eyes on the road so I can see because there's so many holes in the road yeah yeah let me, let me get on past that and it says in verse 12, and when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and he spoke to her. Lord have mercy. She's in the church and he calls for her and he speaks to her. In my natural mind, I would say he already see that she having a problem walking. Uh-huh. Oh, why won't he go to her? Amen. Am I right about it? But he called her to him. Lord have mercy. And, and, and yeah, 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 yeah. And as she went, Lord, God, talk to us. Uh, she could have stayed there, but it said as she went. Yeah, yeah. 
And see, sometimes once God speaks to you, he's waiting for you to take an action towards him and what he's saying to you. Yeah, yeah. And she has that way and on her way, Lord have mercy, God's trying to talk to somebody. As you're on your way to doing what he's called you to do, as you're on your way to come up higher to his voice and hear him better, he says, woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. Let me tell you what God said. God said, I come to heal a crippled church. Yeah. Uh, what, what else? So, I can, so we can paint it right. The church, the body of Christ, is considered a bride. That's a woman. He has some order in the church. Lord God, talk to us. And once uh, things get out of order, the church begins to function crippled. And can't see what they usually can see because they're functioning out of order. And so he said, Terrence, tell my people that I've come to heal a crippled church. A church that's been bent over for a while, God talked to us. And, and he said, woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Let me tell you what the word loose means. It means to set free. And, and the infirmity means a physical or a mental weakness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of us may not have no physical ailments, but some of us may be weak and ailing in our mindset. Oh, yeah. So he says, woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. So he calls her and she heads to him and now he lays his hands on her. And immediately she stands up straight. Lord have mercy. And God said when he come to heal a crippled church or a crippled people, he speak, he calls them, he speaks to them, and then he touches them so that they can stand up and stand up straight. I'm not talking about how you walk. I'm talking about standing up under and in him. Yes, and she glorified God. Just think about this. I, I, I know this ain't none of us. None of us are not spiritually, mental, physically, or emotionally crippled. Nobody not in. No. But just imagine you can really see right for 18 years. And all of a sudden, you didn't even come and get in the prayer line, but you were recognized. And he calls for you. And then he speaks to you. And then after he speaks to you, he touches you in a personal way. And once God touched you, you will never be the same. And then that creates or causes you to go in a place of glorifying him. I'm talking about now, Lord, praise and worship service is over. The Lord God, talk to us. But if he touched you in service, after he speak to you, you will start a praise and worship service all by yeah. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Now, 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 I, I, I need us to really see this. Ray, this time is ticking out. But it's okay. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. He would have rather this woman go back home, Lord have mercy, yes, the same way she came to church. The devil is a liar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We ain't waiting to tomorrow. No, no. We ain't waiting to tomorrow. I believe there's some things that God is saying that I want to loose my people from, and we're not waiting to Monday. We're not waiting to Tuesday. We're not waiting 
to Wednesday. We're not waiting till the board get together. We're not waiting till the intercessors get together. We're not waiting for nothing because God said it's here and it's time for me to liberate my people. And I believe there's some people in here today that God say I want to set you free because I've called you not for you to walk in bondage but I've called you to liberate you. Yeah. And once you're liberated you can praise me right. Once you're liberated you can serve me right. Once you're liberated you can see me right. Yeah. That's what God say. I want to set you free in your mind, in your spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And so hear this woman, uh, after Jesus talked to him about being a play actor, Lord have mercy, and I know that we're not dealing with no play actors in the church. I know we all saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled, and Jesus is the head of my life. Now protocol has been established. There's still some hypocrites in the house. Because, because we know the language, we know the lingo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. As Roy say, too fast song, too slow song, an offering and a preacher, then go home. No, the devil is a liar. Sometimes God will change that up, but because we've been coming to the synagogue so long, we're leaving. And he said, ought not, verse 16, this woman being a daughter of Abraham. And, and, and let me talk to you about Abraham, who is the father of faith. Galatians said it like this here. If you be in Christ, then you are also Abraham's seed. And let me tell you what uh, you inherit being in Christ and seed of Abraham. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 through 14, it says, And if you hearken diligently unto my voice, all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you. He said, you'll be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Blessed when you come in and blessed when... I'm just trying to talk to you about being one of Abraham's seed through Christ Jesus. You have been empowered to be blessed. How have I been empowered to be blessed? Because he hung on a tree and took the curse for me. So I don't need nobody to pronounce a blessing on me. Once I got saved, I am blessed. Yes. I'm not lucky, I'm blessed. What does that mean? I have been empowered to prosper, yes. I have been made fortunate. Not only that, let me help you a little bit more. I am to be envied because I'm blessed. See, we want to be blessed and think everybody going to be happy. That ain't what the word means. You going to be envied. When you're really blessed, everybody ain't happy to see you coming. I promise you that. Even your brothers and kinfolk ain't happy. I, I'm not going to preach to you. I'm going to let Joseph talk to you because his brothers say, here come that dreamer again. That one that got that coat again. The one that always talk about he's seen something or he heard something. But even in them talking and running their mouth, they came to a place and said, let's throw him in a ditch. Yeah, yeah. Let's throw him in a pit and let's see what become of his dream. Guess what? They didn't have the power to change the dream because the dream came from God. It ain't had nothing to do with the coat. It came because it was predestined. Yeah. And you may be in a pit. They may have sold you out. But I I promise you, you're still blessed. In a pit and blessed. In prison and blessed. On the way to the process, you're still blessed because your destiny is to help those people that got a problem. Lord God, talk to us. Yeah, yeah. Why God didn't give me the coat? Well, you might have couldn't handle it. Yeah. Yeah. Lord have mercy. And some of us want to wear the coat, but it's not in the coat. It's in the blessing that God pronounced on them even before they was formed in their mother's womb. That's why some of us had hard birth. That's why some of our parents went through hell because the devil knew that if you come out, there was a blessing on you. You know He said, ought not this woman, this church, ought to be loose. Now let me talk to you about being loosed. But before I talk to you about being loosed, I got to talk to you about being bound. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Hey, hey Roy, yes, before you get free, you got to be locked up. Right. And see, I can hear somebody right now say, I ain't never been locked up. Yeah, that thought that tell me you've been locked up. <laughs> Verse 16. And ought not this woman, this people, being a daughter of Abraham, who Satan had bound. Now, let me tell you what this word bound means. It means tied or secured physically, mentally, or emotionally. 
Have you ever been tied to something physically, mentally, or emotionally? Where your emotions connect you with certain things and certain people. The situation, Lord have mercy, is over, but you're still tied to it, Lord have mercy. It's been gone long, 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 long time ago, but you're still tied to it. Not only tied to it, but the word means securely tied to it. I just can't get them out of my mind. I just can't let them go. That means you are securely tied to it. There you go, Ray. I ain't going to preach that long again. Amen. And this, he says, this woman who has been bound, lo these 18 years be loose from this bond, the word bond means physical restraints used to hold someone prison, prisoner. Especially by ropes or chains. Mm-hmm. Here, we're talking about ropes. We're talking about, I ain't look back now time. We're talking about ropes. We're talking about chains connecting us to something or to someone, to a situation or to a circumstance. Uh, When my wife is not home, I have a few channels that I really like. Word channel, sometime, yes. TVN, sometime. But I love swamp people. I love to watch them boys go out there and hunt. And I watch them from a safe view in my bed. I love to watch UFC fighting. I just love to watch them jokers get body blows. And no, I don't want to train for that because them boys are good at what they do. Roy, sometimes they want you to knock them down. And you reach down if you want to, you're going to be tied securely. But I really, really love to watch National Geographic Channel. Mm -hmm. And and, and I watched that channel, uh, and and they were over in Africa, yes. And and they were in a helicopter, yeah, yeah, the hunters were. And see, me in my mind, I think uh, hunters should take the ground. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I didn't catch the beginning of the show to to find out uh, uh, why they was in the helicopter, but but they, 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 they shot at this large elephant, Lord have mercy, uh-huh, from a safe distance. And they used something called a tranquilizer, uh-huh, that sedated him. What does sedate mean? Uh, it puts him to sleep, Lord have mercy. It causes him to be unconscious, yes. And, and once he comes through, uh, he wakes up, he, he wakes up, he, he wakes up and he's up under a big net now, Lord have mercy. And, and because he's not full strength, God talked to us, uh, uh, he begins to try to do what this woman did and try to get up. Uh, yeah, yeah, but he not knowing that he ain't got the same power no more, yeah, because something is in his system now, yeah. And he fights for a little while and then he lays, Lord have mercy. He lays on down and he throws in the towel, Lord have mercy. Because uh, before he was sedated, he can break a loose war because he's so big, because he's so strong. Uh huh. And, and now he's no longer uh, in Africa. They don't hold him over here to the circus. God talked to us. Yes. And, and, and he's trained now, Roy. He, he's trained how to perform for people. He's trained now how to benefit. Yeah, yeah. He's using his skills to bring money into somebody else's pocket. Yeah. He's not used to being locked up. God talked to us. And Roy, I, I found out that this elephant, because of his memory, keeps him tied up. Mm-hmm. They, they take a small stake. Yeah. About this long, yeah, yeah, about the size of a ruler, yeah. And they hook it to the tent where he got to perform in, God talked to us. And they take a small rope, yeah. And he don't see that small rope, he sees what happened in the past. And the Lord said to me, 
Terrence, my people don't know that thing that they're bound by is smaller than what they think. But their memory connects them back to when it happened. If that elephant ever get in his mind, he can stop the show, Lord have mercy. Uh, but he looks at it and remembers a net. And he won't fight again, Lord have mercy. And see, some of us have been in some situation and, and we couldn't get out. So now when we see it, we won't fight again. Yeah, yeah. And God said, tell my people that in them, they possess the Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah. And in the Holy Ghost is resurrection power. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we sang the anthem that death could not hold me. But the little stuff, yeah, that we're allowing us, yeah, to be held to. If you ever use your keys, say use your keys. He said, I've given you the keys to the kingdom, yeah. That whatsoever you bind on earth, uh-huh, is already bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth is already loosed in heaven. So you need to say that I will not allow this thing to hold me down because I've been loosed from this a long time ago. Stop looking so far back that you can't see your deliverance. You need to talk to what you're held by and say, I've been liberated, I've been called, and now it's time for me to glorify God. And if you glorify God right, I guarantee you, whatever trying to hold you will break loose. Yeah. Yeah. This elephant, this elephant, he, he, he's sitting out there and he don't look real intelligent. But he's under the control of the, the zookeeper or the trainer. Uh -huh. He's benefiting them. If he ever get to the place where we need to get to, that it's time for me to snap up out of this. Yes, yes, yes. We know how to snap out of everything else. Uh -huh. But it's time for me to snap out of this mentality. Yes, 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 yes. And I'm going to share this with you all. And, and, and I promise we, we got a few things and then we're going to go. This week, Thursday morning, I was just home minding my business. Sleep. And in the dream, I began to walk on the water and began to preach to God's people while I was walking on the water. And the water means walking on the power of God or walking in the power of God and walking on the word. And so here I am telling God's people that you have already been made free. And Roy, they just sitting there looking at me like I'm crazy. And so I'm here in a uh, container, you know how they put those storage things by your house, and I'm preaching in it, and the devil comes and wants me to think that I can't get out. But because he changed my views, I was preaching like I was already out. And the Lord said, your problem is you have adjusted to an enclosed mentality, and you don't believe that you can get out. You need to preach yourself out of it. You need to see yourself out of it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, some of us in here right now are just, not, not in here, but just for time's sake, and we're just like that elephant. We need to go to the replay booth and see things differently. You need to change your view. What do the word view mean? It's the ability to see something from a particular place. Yes. It's a particular way of considering something. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm a Buck fan. All day and night. Don't got no Buck shirts, but I like the Bucks. <laughs> I was pulling for Caroline. Yes. I do believe that there was one play that should have been overturned that wasn't overturned. Mm -hmm. I believe it was a catch. And then when it looked at it, in the replay booth. And they didn't overturn it. And I believe that if they would have overturned that, it would turn the momentum in the game. And there's some things that if you go back to the replay booth and find out that he's fearfully and wonderfully made you, you wouldn't walk around depressed nor discouraged nor with low self-esteem. It's because I've been made by the hand of the Lord. You ought to know that, yeah, you might have been made with Mark Clay, but that's all right. 
He picked me up. What he did when he picked you up? He put me back on the wheel. What I mean by the wheel? The parlor put his hands on me. And he began to work a work on the wheel that had never been worked before. He picked me up and he molded with me dirt, Roy. And sometime when he molds, he got to allow some heat to put you right back together again. And see, some of us have fell down like Hump the Dump and you couldn't get back up again. But the king of glory told me to tell you that it's time to get back up again. Yeah, I know you've been crippled for a while, but God told me to tell you it's time to snap out of it you need to snap out of depression you need to snap out of whatever you in defeat you need to snap out of that sick mind you need to snap out of not being able to see what God wants you to see Paul says it like this to the, the church at Galatia he, 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 he walks them through easily he said me my cousin my brother the other apostles I'm just paraphrasing it Preach to you another gospel, let them be accursed. That's what Paul said. And then he starts off in Galatians chapter 3, he says, uh, Who has bewitched you? Who has cast this spell on you? Then you start off in faith, now you want to get to a place of works. Did you receive miracles, signs, and wonders? Get delivered, changed, set free? Now who has cast this spell upon you. Paul said, get back to walking in faith. Get back to believing that you are Abraham. See, get back to believe that you are blessed and not cursed. Get back and believe that, yes, you can come out of this and do better. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And once your view has changed, let me tell you what happens. There's always going to be people and I'm closing. That don't want to see God change you nor your view. But once your view is changed, he sets you in a place now because you can handle it where he's prepared a table for you in the presence of your enemy. Mm -hmm. Because if he puts you in that place with a side of you, You'll want to retaliate. You'll be down to the table saying, uh-uh, you can't sit here because I remember what you've done to me. But this very morning, and everybody on your feet, this very morning, I was in this place about 4 o'clock in a dream. Yes, I'm a dreamer. I'm a dreamer. I'm a dreamer. I thank God for dreams. I thank God. I thank God that I can see. I thank God that he didn't poke my eyes out. And I'm not, not talking about natural, I'm talking about in the spirit. I thank God that I can see further than four walls. I thank, I thank God that I can see out of prison while I was in prison. I thank God I can see I had a job even before I had a job. I thank God I saw myself married even before I got married. It, oh, yeah. And in this place, in this place, God said, Terrence, tell my people, and I stretched forth my hand in the dream. That they are now in a place where I have prepared for them a table in the presence of the ends. He said, tell my people, y'all need to read Psalm 23. He said, tell my people that there will be some strategic moves and you're going to see some people again that you saw in your past. And they're not going to understand how you're doing so good. Lord have mercy. When those people saw that woman leave church that day, they weren't expecting her to walk out of their strength. They weren't expecting her to walk out of their glorified God. They were expecting her to be bent over. God said, I'm standing you up again. Mm. I'm standing you up again. I'm setting you free right now. And Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, God. God, as you speak to and through me, God, that your people will walk in liberation. In the name of Jesus, God, I speak to minds right now, God. That they by your anointing and by your word will walk loose from 
them situations, God. God, they won't be tied to situations nor to people, God, to be up under their control, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I speak deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. God, break every curse, God, every spell, God. Uh, God, in the name of Jesus, God, I plead the blood of Jesus, God, over each and every person in this place, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God. Father, that we no longer look with a side bent overview, God, but that we can see you and see your mighty hand, God, that we're no longer a crippled church, God, but we are a church, God, where you have liberated and called us to be, God, a chosen people, God. Father, we thank you right now, God. I speak, God, to vocal cords, God. I speak to lips and to tongues, God, where the enemy wants them to refuse to say amen in the name of Jesus. God, I speak right now, God, by the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, God. God, that you release and loose tongues in this place, God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, we will not be bound, God. I speak right now, God, that demonic chains be broken right now, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you right now, God. Oh, God. Oh, God, yes, yes, yes. Yes, Jesus. God, I pronounce blessings on your people, God. Father, we pray for the religious spirits right now in the name of Jesus. God, you say you don't want none to perish, but that all come to repentance, God. We're praying for mercy right now, God. Father, have your way, God. Have your way, God. Loose us from our yesterdays, God. Loose us, God, from dead things, God. Yeah, Jesus. I plead the blood right now, God. I plead the blood right now, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Father, you said that no weapon that is formed against us will not prosper, God. Father, you said every tongue that shall rise against us in judgment, God, you shall condemn. God, we thank you right now, God, that we're protected by you, God. You have saw us, God. No longer bound, God. No longer bound, God. No longer crippled, God. But we can stand up straight and stand up in your anointing, God. We can stand up in your power, God, because your power is in us, God. In the name of Jesus, God, help us to walk, God. Not by power, nor by might, but by your spirit, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, we thank you, God. Heal this land, God. Heal this land, God. And Father, I pray, God, that we can see the way you see. Father, I thank you for snapping us out of it. Snapping us out of defeat, God. Oh, Jesus. Liberty in this place in the name of Jesus. Divine freedom in this place in the name of Jesus Christ, God. Father, we thank you, God. That is not a temporary move, God. This, we will experience this from now forth, God. In the name of Jesus. Let me, let me tell you what God saying right now. God said he's releasing a grace and a mercy right now. And this is what I just saw. He said at his name, every knee shall bow. God just showed me a buckling. What's that mean? A buckling is when there's resistance that don't want to do what he called, that God said that if I have to, I will cause a buckling. Way that you will yield to what I'm doing. Father, we thank you for your mercy right now, God. And Father, you said the day that we hear your voice, not to harden our heart, God, I pray 
that you help us, God. Help us, God. God says, it's me. He said, it's me, this move, it's me. God said, it's me, Lord have mercy. He told it to Peter. Peter them thought it was a ghost. He said, it is I. Don't be afraid. So, Father, I thank you right now for settling your word, God. And, Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, for each and every person in this place, God, that if they got to do like Peter said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. Lord, I'm scared, God, but if you tell me to come, God, I'll come. Father, we thank you right now, God. Father, we thank you, God, for this, what you're doing. Yeah. A great move. Mm -hmm. A county move, a city move, a state move. God, it's a global move, God. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. It's a heavenly move. Yeah. Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank Breathe on us in this place, God. Is that what you're struggling with? God said you're going to win this time. God said you're going to win this time. All because of a word he's released into you. And I'm going to do what God told me this morning. Come here, Sylvia. I don't know who prayed over this all, but it's okay. Amen. Come here. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to lay my hand on any man that come. I'm just going to touch you and put oil on you. And God's going to loose you from your struggle. Any man that come, I'm not coming, walking to you. Not that I'm prideful, but God called the ones that wanted to be loosed. And I don't know how, Lord, have mercy. My wife is going to lay hands, just going to put oil on you, any woman that comes, if you won't. There's nothing in the oil, there's nothing in her hand, but we're trusting God to do a great move and to liberate us in the name of Jesus. I know it sounds crazy, it sounds crazy when the prophet told him, Naaman to go dip in the water. And I speak right now as a vessel of God that as I yield and Sylvia yields that God will work a great work in your life and that this will be a token of the beginning of you walking in a level of liberty you never experienced before. It won't be temporary. This here gonna last. This here gonna last. Even like the prophet said, this oil here not going to run out.